In this video, I'm going to present some Controls Lab fundamentals and introduce operational amplifiers. What is the most common mistake in the lab? Knowing which terminals are electrically connected on a breadboard. For that reason, we're going to review that right now. So here's a, a cartoon of a breadboard that we might have in the lab. These terminals are all connected to one another. If I apply a voltage to one of those terminals, all of the terminals experience the exact same voltage. You could think of them as a node. All of these terminals are connected to one another. You can see in that column, all the terminals in the column are connected. Same thing on the other side. These ones are connected to one another, forming a node. These are connected to one another, forming a node. Now what happens in the middle? These are connected, forming a node. These ones are connected. These ones are connected all the way down that side to the bottom. There, these ones are connected to one another, but to nothing else, forming one node. And on the other side, same idea. So the most common mistake in the lab is to forget that these uh, terminals, how the terminals are connected on a breadboard. The plus and minus labels on a breadboard are simply suggestions. You don't have to follow them. Uh, it might help, but uh, they're simply suggestions. It doesn't mean that there's any kind of uh, voltage supply in the breadboard that supplies a voltage to those terminals that are labeled plus and minus. Uh, incidentally, I would strongly encourage you to avoid the breadboards that are mounted to the power supplies we have in the lab. They are old and the connections are not very good. Some circuit building advice I have for you in the lab. Minimize the number of jumper wires used. Uh, remember that resistors are wires themselves uh, because they have a little wire on either end of the resistor component. So they can be used uh, as both a resistor and a wire all in one. Again, avoid reusing the breadboards that are mounted to the power supplies. Remember which terminals are connected to the breadboards. Don't forget it. I could say that a million times. We might still have problems. Uh, the circuits that you build in the lab need not look exactly like a circuit diagram provided. I think one of the reasons why we have so much trouble with breadboards in the lab is students look at a cartoon of a circuit or a circuit diagram and they try to make the circuit they build in the lab look like the cartoon rather than behave like the circuit in the diagram. Here's a handheld digital multimeter we have in the lab. We can use it to measure voltage, current, resistance, continuity, capacitance, temperature, several different things. Uh, you'll become familiar with it. Um, we'll use it every week. Um, I don't know that I need to say much more. Now, to operational amplifiers. Here's a model for an ideal operational amplifier. It's got several components to it. Uh, it's just a cartoon. It's not exactly how op amps work, but uh, we typically draw a cartoon of an op amp with a triangle. And if we could, if we imagine what's inside, one model for what's inside, and this is not exactly what's inside, is that it consists of a resistor, this R in. It can consist of a dependent voltage source. It's the diamond shape you see inside the triangle. That, uh, and uh, another resistor called R out. The relationship between V in on the left and V out on the right of this op amp is that V out is equal to A times V in, where A is the gain of the system. In an ideal operational amplifier, the gain would go towards infinity. It'd be a very large number. The input resistance would be close to infinity, and the output resistance would be close to zero. This would be a model for an ideal operational amplifier. More practical operational amplifier has roughly the same behavior. V out is equal to some A times V in, A being the gain. But in this case, the gain is um, on the order of 10 to the fifth to 10 to the seventh. So think of 1 million as the gain. The 
input resistance is big. It's a million uh, or 10 to the sixth, 10 to the 12th ohms. That's a very uh, large resistance. And the output is rather small, uh, 10 to the zero to 10 to the one ohm, the output resistance. Now I'd like to take a look at an example uh, considering a practical op amp. What if we have an input to this op amp of one volt? And if we consider a gain of about one million, we would expect the output to be one million volts. So I think we've solved the energy crisis here. If we simply take an op amp connected to the power coming out of the wall, we can take 120 volts coming out of the wall and make it 120 million volts. We will never have energy problems again. We will not have any dependence upon fossil fuels. It's amazing, but it's not. Turns out that uh, operational amplifiers actually require power for them to function. So that's what this is. They, they require a positive voltage source, a VS plus, and, and a negative voltage source, a VS minus, in order to do their job, such that if we apply it a one volt to a system like this, uh, one volt for VN, the output would actually be VS. Typically in the lab, VS will be six volts for us, or and v, VS minus would be uh, negative six volts for us. So in this particular example, we put one volt in, we'd probably get about six volts out because the output is limited by the uh, voltage su supply, VS plus and VS minus. Typical assumptions we make when analyzing op-amp circuits is that the input current, IN, is equal to zero, and that the two input voltages, V plus and V minus, are equal to one another, and that's valid when there is an electrical pathway connecting V minus to V out. A cartoon of what an op-amp actually looks like in the lab is a rectangle with four pins on either side of it, all labeled uh, one. Uh, there, there's no label on those pins, but, but I've labeled them here one through eight. You identify pin number one based on a dot, this black dot on the op amp. Okay, and that tells you that's pin number one next to the dot. You go down one side and then up the opposite side to get the pin numbers. To understand how this is specific to a 741 op amp, which we will be using in the lab. Other op amps may have different wiring diagrams, but for the 741 op amp, which we will focus on in the lab, you can kind of superimpose this triangle cartoon on top of it, such that pin two is the negative input to the op amp, pin three is the positive input to the op amp, pins seven and four connect to the supply voltage, seven to the positive supply, four to the negative supply, and pin six is the output of the op amp. I'm going to show you how to use a 741 op amp to create a inverting amplifier circuit, okay? Now these op amps have eight pins on them, four on each side. They also have a little dot and I would say that would be on the top left corner. That dot indicates which pin is pin number one. So next to that dot is pin one, going down two, three, four, moving to the other side and going up five, six, seven, eight. Now each pin does something different. So when we put it into a breadboard, we should slide it in so that the legs straddle the slot down the breadboard. So then on either side, we can have access to the eight pins without connecting the pins one to another by putting it somewhere else in the breadboard. To power this op amp, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get uh, power with uh, plus six volts and a uh, minus six volts from our triple power supply. In order to do that, what I wanna do is I wanna take my digital multimeter and make sure that it's set up make sure that the that the triple power supply is set up to uh, to be at six and minus six volts. Now the digital multimeter 
uh, on the probe tips have these caps. I like to remove them for most of what I do. And I'll just drop this in to the negative terminal right there, remove the probe tip on the red one, drop it in on the plus terminal here. And it says that it's at nine volts right now. So I'm going to use a little screwdriver in the set screw right here and dial it down until I get pretty close to six volts. Doesn't need to be exact. This is probably good enough. Good enough for me. Okay, now I'm gonna go to move the red one to the minus terminal right here. And it should be at, uh, I want minus six volts. So I'm going to dial that down again on this side to get something close to six volts. There's nothing magical about 6.00 volts because of course this isn't uh, exact. Nothing's exact in the lab, but get something close to six volts it should be good. Now I can remove my multimeter, put the probe tips back on of course, and set it aside. Okay, now I'm gonna turn off my triple power supply for the time being. I like to keep the power off at uh, all times whenever I'm not actually actively using a circuit, especially when I'm building a circuit, okay? So for the triple power supply here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need access to ground. That's this black terminal. So I'm gonna take uh, this wire right here and place it in right there, tighten it down with that screw. And of course I clamp down onto the wire, the metallic part of the wire, not the insulation part of the wire. And uh, for convenience, I think I'm gonna put it over here uh, in this hole right there next to the blue line with the negative sign on it. The negative positive signs, they're just a recommendation. It's not necessary to use that, but in this case, I think I'm gonna use, wire that to the negative sign right here. Then I'd like to take, perhaps I'll take a, a reddish wire right here, and I'm going to tether that into the plus five volts and into this red plus line over here on the right. So I guess that's a plus six volts, sorry about that. Then I'm gonna take another red wire over here and I'm gonna tie it into the negative terminal. So that's going to be at negative six volts. And I'm gonna connect it up into the red plus over here. Notice that I'm putting a negative into the plus. No one's stopping me from doing that. Um, as long as I keep track of what I'm doing, I should be fine. So in order to, uh, now we need to get that power. We've we've powered some uh, terminals here on the breadboard. Now we get that need to get that power to the op amp. So uh, pin number seven on the op amp is gets the positive supply voltage and that's the wire right here. So I'm gonna put a wire in next to pin number seven and then plug it into that column of dots associated with the plus six volts. I'm gonna take a wire right here plug it into the minus six volts, and it needs to go into pin number four. So I'm gonna put this in next to pin number four. It can be anywhere in that row associated with pin number four of our op amp. I forgot to mention that, notice that I'm using this independent uh, breadboard. I'm not using the breadboard built into my power supply. These breadboards have been used for years, and um, usually when you put in an op amp into them, it doesn't make a good connection. So they've been uh, overused. They're, they're no longer uh, very good at making electrical connections. Okay, so now we have our op amp in there. We've supplied it with power. Now we want to uh, build uh, kind of our circuit that uh, uses that op amp. For the circuit that uses the op amp, what I want is I want a resistor going into the, uh, the negative terminal uh, the negative input. So that's pin number two. So I'm gonna put one leg of my one kilo ohm resistor so that it connects to pin number two of my op amp. And the other leg, you know what? I'm just gonna let it free because this is where I'm gonna connect it to the input to my inverting amplifier circuit. A second resistor, uh, this first resistor has a red band on it. So it's brown, black, red, gold. That means it's a one kilo ohm resistor. This res resistor right here is a brown, black, orange, gold, which means it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And what it does is it connects the negative input of the op amp 
to the output of the op amp. The negative input again is on pin number two. So that's one dot, that's one pin down from uh, pin number one, which is next to the dot. And the other side connects to pin number six. Okay, so that's one pin up from the bottom right. And I just plug that in and it goes like that. Notice that I'm using the resistor as both, as, as both a wire and a resistor. I'm using it to connect those things. Um, often students will take wires from these places, bring them down somewhere, and then put the resistor in line. That's unnecessary. I like to use as few wires as possible. One last thing we need to do here is we need to connect the positive reference, the positive input for the op amp to ground. In this case, I guess I'll use a green wire because it's going to ground. So I'll put that into pin number three and then into the blue stripe, which is should be ground. And if I built this correctly, everything should work out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up uh, my oscilloscope. For channel one of my oscilloscope, I want to measure I want to measure the input. The input to the circuit is going to be connected to this resistor relative to ground. Uh-oh, I'm going to need another wire here to measure ground. So I'm going to put this wire in next to the blue strip to connect to ground. Okay. I need to have a shared ground with the power supply and for everything around here. Next on channel two, I'm pull on channel two here. For channel two, I want to have it connected first, right there, and second to the, uh, sorry, I want the alligator clip to ground because we're gonna measure relative to ground. When the alligator clip is always attached to ground. And the output again is at pin six, and it's on the right-hand side, uh, the right-hand part of that resistor. So that'll be the output. Now I want to supply the input to my circuit. The input to my circuit is the output of my function generator. And I'm going to take the function generator, connect the red to the input, this free hanging resistor over here, and the black side. Uh, there's not a lot of space to connect to, so I'll just add another wire here to connect to ground. Okay, and we're all set. And look, we can see that we're already measuring something on the oscilloscope. Uh, perhaps I'll set up a measurement here. Uh, channel one will be my input again, and I wanna measure on channel one. Let's say I wanna measure the uh, peak to peak, peak to peak, and it says it's uh, 480 millivolts. That's pretty good for me. So that'll be my input peak to peak. And if I wanna measure my output peak to peak, I could do that as well. Channel two and measurement type uh, peak to peak. There we go. And now we've got two measurements on the oscilloscope. It's at roughly uh, 100 hertz. Okay. Now it's time to turn on the triple power supply and we'll see what happens. Okay. So for this circuit, this was an inverting amplifier. We have a feedback resistor of a 10 kilo ohm feedback resistor and input. Uh, resistor, oops, input resistor of one kilo ohm. That should provide us with an amplification of 10. And we see that we're putting in about 450 millivolt peak to peak, and we're getting out about 4.5 volt peak to peak. So that's a, an amplification of 10. That's good. And we also see on the oscilloscope that where the troughs are in the input, we have peaks in the output. So it's an inverting amplifier. It changes the sign of the signal. So everything looks good. We've built a inverting amplifier. I'll uh, move the camera here so you can see a little bit closer to that circuit if you'd like. 